Hi everyone, I would like to share with you some tactics when using the air rifle, but first I want to show you a demonstration on how the air rifle performs. Hope you enjoy. Alright, let's begin. Here's the air rifle here in third person mode. Very nice. Aiming down the sights in third person mode. Really nice gun. Now, let's reload it. Aiming down the sights. Now, this isn't semi-automatic like the 2-2 Plinkington rifle. You do have to reload after each shot. As you can see, I just forgot there. Now, this does have some uh, bullet drop, I guess you could say. <laughs> it's really a pallet, but I'll say bullet drop. Do you have to aim high? I think it has bullet drop at 50 actually, my predictions were a bit off. So 10, 20, 30, 40 doesn't seem to be an issue, it should be on the pin sight there. But I'm pretty sure 50 is when it has a bit of a drop. Yeah it did, yeah two points I aimed in the middle there. And let's have a look. Yeah see it hit low. So 50 meters is where it starts to have a tiny bit of drop. There we go, that was 8 points. Good enough. Now, let's try it with the scope on now. Here's the scope. Lovely scope. Again, it looks much different with the scope on. Doesn't have the iron sights down the bottom there. Very nice. And aiming down the sights. In third person as well. Really a nice looking rifle. They've done an excellent job. Alright, so here's the scope. Now, I haven't tested so far over 100 meters with this, but here we go. So, 10 meters. Right on the bullseye. And points again. So it's really, really accurate so far. So yep, yeah, looks very good. Again, the scope does have a three time zoom. I believe this is a six time zoom and a nine time zoom. I'm going to be using the nine time zoom on the 50 meter target here. There we go. See, I aimed a bit above there, so it does have some drop, even with the scope on. So let's try 100 meters. Now, this is where it, it drops heavily. <laughs> Hopefully there's not any wind. We'll have a look, see what we can do. I'm going to aim at the bottom dot there, just below the middle cross there, the first dot at the bottom. Six points, so it even had more drop than the first dot. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I wouldn't advise you shooting over 50 meters with this air rifle, but it's a good challenge weapon. I definitely recommend it to people that want to challenge with shooting small critters because this gun right here. The 2 team Plinkington, it just trumps it in every other way possible. This gun here makes the air rifle pretty much useless unless you want to be stalking 
animals. I think the air rifle has around about maybe a 30 meter spook radius, whereas the Plinkington has around about an 80 meter spook radius. There's a bit of difference there. So, I mean, if you want to go super stealthy, the air rifle is definitely really good. But as for the Plinkington, I think you have to aim a bit below. Yep. Oops. I forgot this is semi automatic. Alright, let's have a look. Very nice. Keep going. Yeah, that aims high. So that is a difference right there, that the Plinkington aims high from 10 to 50 metres. I think it, it gets level at 100. Let's have a look. Yeah, pretty much exactly on it. So yeah, that's the difference right there. Air rifle is perfect accuracy, 10 to 50, no, 10 to 40 metres. Then 50 meters outwards, it has, it has a bit of drop to it. Whereas the Plingington aims high from 10 to 90 meters, and then 100 meters is where it's level. And then beyond that, I think it's 140 meters it has bullet drop or so. But as for the scopes, if we compare the two, that's 3 to 9 by 40, so even the scope is better because the air rifle only has 3 to 9 by 32. So yeah, I don't know what they're going to do about the air rifle. I mean, if you do want a challenge weapon, it's definitely up there. Um, as for the Plinkington, you can have even the 12 times scope with that. So the air rifle at the moment only has the 3 to 9 by 1. Alright, so we've tested it out a bit. Let's see how it does on rabbits and pheasants. Let's have a go at it. Before we begin with rabbits, I wanted to show you pheasant. Now with pheasant, they're probably the most easiest to hunt out of all the permitted species for the air rifle, because you do have a caller for them. And there's a reply, there we go. Now with the caller, it provokes a vocal response for the birds. They won't come over to you, however. So what I'm going to do, since they're all there, I'm just going to run at them. There we go. There's a 50% chance or so that ones will flee and run like this. There's all the different animations. So there's either a running animation or a flying animation or a bedding down animation. Now the bedding down animations are the ones you want to look for. Of course I could have stalked them, but I just want to get this nice and quick here. So, here's the pheasant here. This is a little tactic you can do for the pheasants. When you run at them like this, they do bed down sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. And when they bed down, you can line up your shot. You can run around the pheasant, get fairly close. You can get about six meters or so, I think. You still won't fly. So, and what we'll do, we'll just lay down on here. Even loud shots, such as a rifle, will not spook a pheasant. And the rabbits do have a similar um, behavioural trait that I'll get to in a minute. But the pheasants are probably the most easiest to shoot with the air rifle because they do not need a specific type of a body part to actually shoot at under 50 metres. So I just shoot wherever, doesn't matter. Shoot it on the friggin legs here. Let's still go down. He's a bit above the legs. And I run over and collect him now. Now with the rabbits, it's a bit different, which I'll get to in a minute. You do have to do a specific body part to actually kill them. But anywhere on the pheasant under 50 meters, it's going to be a body hit or a neck or a head shot. Now, if you're shooting over 50 meters, you do have to shoot the neck or the head. But, as I said before, if you're close at 50 metres, you can shoot wherever on the pheasant and it'll still go down with the air rifle. Alright, moving on to rabbits. 
Is this you when hunting rabbits? Stalking them like this? Trying to take it nice and slow? Casually getting up to them? Well, it's not the best way to hunt them, apparently. The best way is actually running. Yep, that's right. Despite what people tell you, the best method to hunting rabbits, any rabbits for that matter, cottontail rabbits, snowshoe hare rabbits, is to just run at them like this. When you run at them, they will flee, but that is fine because it is the bedding state that you're looking after here. Now the bedding state is perfect, that's what we want. We want the rabbit to flee and then eventually lie down and we can shoot it. Oh, there it is there. There we go. So that's perfect. So since it's lying down, very similar to the pheasants, you can get fairly close. I wouldn't get close than 10 meters to a rabbit though. So what I'm going to do is take it out. Now, with the rabbits, there is a bit more tactics involved. With the rabbit, you do have to shoot a specific part of the body. You can't just shoot anywhere, because it will survive if you hit the wrong parts. The wrong parts of the rabbits, the ones that count as a non-lethal hit under 50 meters, are the legs, the tail, and the ears. Anywhere else is a viable kill. So I'll show you here. Here's a little method I've found. If you can't see the head of the rabbit, you can only see the top of the back, what I'll do is just shoot the top of the back. Now, that did look bad, but it should die. And there it is dead over there. So, that is a viable method. You don't have to always go for the neck or the head. But again, I do stress that over 50 meters, you do have to shoot the neck or the head. I do not advise you shooting over 50 meters though. Because if you do, the wind can affect the pellet a hell of a lot. In fact, out of all the rifles, it's probably the most heavily affected due to wind. So here we go. 15 meters, body hit, killed at 3.8 second wound time. Let's move on. So just as I'm running here, trying to get this other rabbit that I'm tracking, I want to discuss camo. Now for camo, for rabbits, camouflage that is, since you're going to be running around like an idiot like this, <laughs> the best camo is actually, you don't need camo. That's right, you don't need camo for rabbits. A lot of people think you do, but you don't. Best method is running after them like this, so camo pretty much becomes irrelevant. The only time when I can see camo to be good, that I hate to suggest it, but the ghillie suit would actually be um, okay on European rabbits because with those rabbits in particular they they flee to a hole then you set up a tree stand as such and wait in ambush. Now of course I think camo must give some benefit when you're in a tree stand so the ghillie suit's probably the best because rabbits are only really can detect you on visual or sound they cannot smell you. There's a rabbit might have stopped up here. Let's have a look. Always use binoculars to glass around. See if that spotting info comes up. If it's not there, might as well just keep running. Now, of course, knowing your environment is another huge thing with rabbits. Oh, here we go. There it is up there. So, with your environment, of course this differs from map to map. But, if you're hunting on this map in particular, there it is there. <laughs> you got to look out for this, those little clusters of trees, and those little cluster of trees. Well, they're actually bushes, so I should name them bushes, and those trees. So these little clumped up little white bushes there, they can stop and bed down there, as you just see here. And even the little three trees right there. Let's see what we can do here. Where is he? Oh, lost him again. Wait for that spotting info to come up. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Go for a headshot. Everyone collect him. 
So yeah, these little spots here, they usually bed down, so if one does spook and you have no idea where it is, just look for those areas and you should find him. So there he is there, so again, you don't want to shoot the ears under 50 meters, or the legs, or the tail. This part here, basically the curve, just at the top of the back there, is fine. That's a lethal hit, and the head, and the neck. So another tactic you can do is when you see a rabbit fleeing out in the distance like this, don't chase after it, just wait, observe it, and it will eventually bed down. Now the reason why you don't want to fully chase after it is if you do, they're likely to just keep fleeing and fleeing and fleeing, but if you stop, they will stop basically. So 101 meters out, I can use the range finder, click it, and let's run over and see if we can find it hiding down over there. Now, sometimes, when you cannot see the rabbit, even though you know where he is, a good, another good viable method is to actually lie down and wait for the rabbit to get out of that bedding state. Then he will roam around a bit, and you can shoot him. Let's see. Yeah, I think he's... I can spot him. Oh, there he is. So, since we can't see this rabbit as clearly as I would hope, what I'm going to do is, let's see if we can get on this rock here, nope, we can't, damn it, alright, so, that didn't turn out to plan, let's, let's lie down here, and we'll see what happens, he should stand up, and when he does, we'll pop him with the air rifle, there he is there, I could shoot him now, but, just show that he'll stand up, look around, and then we can shoot him. So it's a lot easier doing that, rather than shooting him bedding down where you can barely see him. Just wait it out, he'll eventually pop his head up, try to look around, see if he can find us, but nope, he gets a pellet to the brain. <laughs> so there we go, headshot 15.5 meters, very nice. That's it for this video. Remember, if you want to see more content from me, you can always check out my Twitch channel. The link is in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching.